Having looked at some of my politically incorrect perceptions of the share market, I now want to drill down to demonstrate where the real value lies. In this next slide, I am going to offer you two potential sources of retirement income. One will be red and the other yellow. The data I will use represents three years of actual income from these two sources. The main rule of this particular engagement is that I want your decision to be reflex. By that I mean I don't want you to dwell on the information. Merely make the decision quickly based on what I am about to visually present. Now I believe, if the majority are any example, that your choice would most likely have been the red income stream, as it was clearly superior. I have given three years data as a reasonable representation of the time frame one might use for making this sort of decision. Current year, one year historic and one year prospective. As an observation, I would suggest that often decisions are made without any reference to time frames or basis in fact, but merely on perceptions of likely outcomes. To continue this experiment in perceptions, I would now like to offer you more information. But before I do so, I would like to draw a distinction. Information isn't knowledge, and knowledge isn't wisdom. I draw this distinction because of the prevalent assumption to the contrary, that is, that if one has a larger amount of information, then one is in a superior position. I believe that knowledge is required first to enable us to assimilate and use information productively, as, without knowledge, most of the information at your fingertips will be largely useless chatter in your hands. I now invite you to choose again the income stream you would prefer. Clearly, extending the time frame gives a totally different result. Now what we have here are two income streams that come from two assets at totally opposite ends of the spectrum. The red bars represent the income that was available had I, for example, retired in 1980 and simply dropped my super payout of $100,000 into a term deposit and rolled it over at maturity each year. As a result, the red bars in this chart represent broadly the interest rates that have prevailed in this country over the 30-year period shown. The contrast are the yellow bars, which are the dividends paid had I taken the same amount of money and simply dropped it into a basket of industrial shares represented broadly by the All Industrials Index and simply left it there. Whilst the words left it there for 30 years just roll off my tongue, I acknowledge that it is a big ask as many would be incapable of leaving the investment alone for 30 years. As will be demonstrated in following editions, to achieve the optimal result requires long-term thinking and early planning. In looking at this chart, I want to make you aware that none of the interest or dividends have been reinvested over the 30-year period. I should therefore emphasise that the two income streams you are looking at have been available to all of us over that period and beyond. I would also make the following observation, that many people who have retired over the last four decades that needed the most effective income chose the asset that was the least effective in meeting their goals. The reason was simple. The overriding perception that shares were risky and paid little income whilst term deposits were safe and paid higher income. Let's now examine the concurrent capital performance of these two assets. Not surprisingly, the capital values over the long term reflect the influence of the income streams. Two expressions we should be aware of in relation to companies are dividend payout ratios and retained earnings. 
What these mean is that most companies do not pay 100% of their profits to shareholders. The dividend payout ratio represents the amount of the profit that a company considers it prudent to pay shareholders each year. The balance of the profit is retained and reinvested in the business. Hence, the vertical yellow bars you see represent approximately 50% of company profits. The balance is reinvested and therefore represented in the yellow line. I hope that it is now becoming apparent why dividends and share prices rise broadly in line with one another as each represents roughly half of the total re return generated by these companies. Cash, in the example above, has a payout ratio of 100%. That is, all of the interest received is spent, not reinvested. Because companies do not normally pay out 100% of earnings in dividends, this does two things. One, it gives a lower initial yield than cash, but secondly, it gives a bigger asset base for next year's earnings, which should create higher earnings and so on. For the skeptics, even if you reinvested the interest on your cash, it never catches the industrial investment if you had also reinvested dividends. If that all sounds a bit complicated, I would ask you to consider this next chart. I acknowledge it is an oversimplification because it was used at my children's school in an attempt to get this concept across to Year 12 students. Let's say we run a small business with an initial capital of $10,000. And, having modelled the business, we know that at the price we can sell our output, we are able to generate a return on our capital, or ROE, of 10%. Let's also assume a payout ratio of 50%. In year one, we generate a profit of $1,000. We pay a dividend of $500, and retain the balance of the profits of $500. In year two, we now have an expanded capital base, 10,000 plus 500. Therefore, the 10% return on the expanded capital base will now generate a profit of 1,050. Again, we pay half as a dividend and retain the balance. We start year three with a capital base of $11,025. The 10% return produces a return of $1,102, and so on. I hope that this simple example gives you some comfort and, most importantly, an understanding that there is a perfectly rational reason why the value of a good business increases over the long term. I add the caveat that whilst this chart reflects the relatively stable value of a private company with no lunatic shareholders, if we were a public company, our share price could go anywhere, depending on the whim of stockbroking analysts, share traders, hedge funds, etc.